Swaddling a baby can be a wonderful tool to help your baby sleep longer and deeper in those early months of life. However, transitioning out of the swaddle can be a less than cozy experience. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you when you should stop swaddling and how you can do it with grace. Your sweet days of swaddling are numbered. I hate to break that to you, but it is true because it can be dangerous for baby once they can roll over. So when do we need to stop swaddling? Well, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, they say at eight weeks or two months, you should stop swaddling. This is a conservative number and they feel like it's just a safe blanket statement to put out there. Other doctors like Dr. Harvey Karp, who is a pediatrician, recommends more like four to five months old. But I think everyone will tell you it really comes down to your baby and their individual development. Because the truth is, some babies roll over at two months and some don't roll over till four or five months. So where does your baby fall in line? That's when you need to stop swaddling once your baby can roll over. Because you think about it, it is just not safe. If their arms are locked down and they roll onto their belly, it's very difficult to just use your neck strength to get the air that you need. So with my baby Faith, she started really getting the hang of rolling over around four months. And that's when I knew, okay, it's time to transition out of this swaddle. So the first thing we did with baby Faith is we did the one-handed swaddle. So we took her left hand, we still swaddled that arm down, but we left her right hand free. And we did that for a couple weeks um, and that worked out really well. She still slept deeply and long. Um, but then we realized, you know what? that she's getting too good at rolling over, even with the one arm out, we got to transition out of this. So then we started looking at other options. So the next was the zippity zip. This is kind of a wearable blanket. It covers their arms. They call it a starfish design. I like to say the penguin look because it looks like they've got these little flippers. Um, but for a lot of babies, this could be a great tool because it keeps them a little bit more enclosed. They don't scratch themselves. It's a little bit more weight, you know, in their bodies um, to help them prevent maybe some of that startle reflex from waking them up. So we tried that with Faith and you know what? It didn't work. She slept really poorly with it. She would wake herself up. I would literally see her jerking with this little, great little contraption on. So we had to move to the next thing. But let me say, my daughter Paloma did fantastic with the zippity zip. So for some babies, it's the perfect transition plan. You can wear that for a couple months and then they can go on to a more wearable blanket. So moving on with Faith, we looked into the weighted options. So this is a new phenomenon out there on the market. These are weighted sleep sacks. So a popular one is by a company called Nested Bean. And it looks like a little uh, bean bag right there on the chest. It's very lightweight, but it just gives a little added pressure and it makes the baby feel a little bit more secured and comforted because there's a little bit of weight right there, almost like mom has her hand right on baby's chest. Um, the arms are still nice and free. It basically looks like a sleep sack or a wearable blanket, except for that little added weight. We tried that with baby Faith and guess what? didn't work. She was way too free still. She was whacking herself with her hands. So we had to pass over that. But again, for some parents, this is a great solution. So definitely check it out. And I have to say it's really well made. The cotton is super soft. I really like the idea of the product. And it does encourage back sleeping because of that little weight pocket there right there. So we moved on to the next device, which is called a sleep suit. Now I have to be honest, I was very resistant to this because we live in Florida. It's very hot here. And so this thing is basically like putting your baby in a snowsuit. And something that's not good for babies is for them to get overheated. In fact, that is a risk factor for SIDS. So you can see why I was resistant to going this route. However, I found a sleep suit that had vents. It's made by a company called Crib Culture. No, I'm not getting paid to do this video for them, but it, it literally has these little zips underneath the arms. You can open it up. There's some ventilation under there. And then we just set the temperature in our bedroom super cold. So we're at like 67, 68 degrees. And so I am confident that my baby is not overheated in this suit. And let me tell you that this has been the magic bullet for us. She is sleeping like eight consecutive hours at night. Hallelujah. Um, after getting up like four or five times a night. So I am one grateful mama. Um, but this is a fantastic tool for some babies. But a couple conditions. One, you gotta be sure that your nursery is cool. You gotta be sure that baby is not overheated. So we don't put anything on baby except for her diaper and then this suit. Um, and this also actually interesting to note for some babies that had really bad reflux or GERD who are in something called the Fisher Price Rock and Play, that can be a very difficult thing to transfer out of into a crib. And moms are finding that these Merlin or the crib culture wearable sleep suits um, are really helping that as well. So the way these sleep suits work is it kind of slows down baby's movements. So even if they have that Moro or the startle reflex, it's more muted and it's not as jerky. And let me tell you, it really does work. 
work. So there you have it, some tools and tips and tricks to help you transition baby out of the swaddle. Just know that this is a funky little transition that you will get through it. Eventually baby is going to be six, seven, eight months old. They're not going to have that startle reflux and they can just wear a nice wearable blanket or the sleep sack like I like to call it and they'll be sleeping pretty and they can do whatever they need to do in terms of rolling around and they'll be safe. But in the meantime, I hope these tips will help you. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you had any special tips or tricks, be sure to share it in the comments below so we can learn from each other and I'll catch you next time.